Right guys, so something a little bit different today. Um, firstly, I want to just mention that Fatal Thanks 2 is back. If you'd like to support me and all the other YouTubers that are in it, I'll put a video down in the comments below that um, Mr. Bug Realm, Sam has done um, explaining this year's competition and how it's changed from last year's. So go and check that video out and don't forget there'll be lots of people to do it. Um, secondly, I watched a video, I think last night it was released, which won't be last night when you watch this, um, of Predator Prey Online with the Chili Challenge. Um, crack me up, great video, absolutely loved it. Gar is a legend and um, look forward to doing whatever his next challenge is. I'll, again, I'll link that in the description below. Please go and check that out. It's got some cracking YouTubers in it and it's a very, very funny video. Especially you get to see Gav from Gav's Tarantulas pretty much dying and his family laughing at him, which is what we like. Um, and thirdly, this is going to be a top 10 in my collection of the most like visually appealing tarantulas I own. So kind of display tarantulas um, I know people are thinking Trancher Collective did that and to be honest it's because of him Coin fly. Um, because of him is the reason why I'm actually doing this I did say to him I thought it was a great idea for a video um, I thought of doing similar things myself not necessarily visually how they look but I thought it was a great video um, commented on it saying that I thought it was a really good idea and he replied saying I would like to see you do one and then we can compare lists kind of thing. So I'll put the link to the Tarantula Collectives down in the description with the other two. And this is my top 10 like visually appealing spider slash setups, which I own. So people might disagree with me if you know my collection and I've missed them out. Tell me why I shouldn't have missed them out. Tell me what's special about them and why they should have been in this video. Let's get on with it. guys so number 10 on my visually appealing collection to what I own um, is you probably saw two three videos one of them I'll put the link up above here if you want to see it um, is the Bracky Palmer Vagan or Vagans or how you would like to pronounce it depending on where you're from and um, the Mexican Red Rump I think this one's massively underrated in the hobby. The stunning of the black and the red um, just sets it off. So let's see if we can see that one in action. And then we'll get back and see what number nine is. Anyway, so here she is in all of beauty. Um, as you can see, the dark, almost velvety color from the black, the red hairs on the abdomen, um, this spider is just for how underrated it is in the hobby and how much it gets missed on people's like favourites. He's even doing a wave to the camera. Look, how can you not love this spider? But yeah, I've had this one since it was a sling. I'm juvenile now. I'll put a picture up on the screen now of how it will look as an adult, which isn't much different to how it looks as a juvenile. It's obviously had enough. But that one there is number 10 on my list and you can see the reason why. Let's get back to the next one. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the Vegans. Um, number 9 on the list is the Karamastola Poultra or the Brazilian Black. Um, I know what people are thinking. It's a black tarantula. But it's the velvetness the shine and everything about it that's enough of me talking about it let's have a look at the grandma stuff
Oh, it's on Exxon account at number eight. Is he Neil Fiennesey or the Trinidad Olive? Is it is commonly known? Um, this is another species that, in my opinion, is possibly a little bit overlooked. The pattern and the colours on it are stunning. So let's go and take a look at that one. I'm going to show this is my New Holland Fiennesey or the Trinidad Olive. Um, you can see, just look at those colours. Absolutely stunning. It's almost like a metallic golden black on its carapace. It's an absolutely amazing spider. Now, I don't know if everyone's like this and just seem to hide out in the open. This is a uh, grown on sling, probably one mile away from juvenile. Um, I'll put a picture up of what they look like as an adult. But as you can see, this is the reason why it's number eight. The colours on it are absolutely crazy. Right, guys, that brings us to number seven on the countdown. Almost got my fingers confused then. Um, the Nandrochromatus. Again, for the size this spider grows to and the different patterns and stuff, it seems to be very underrated. Um, you'll see in two seconds, so I'm going to flip the camera around and try and film it a bit. I've heard people say that some of them are defensive and some of them strike and stuff like that, but I'll be honest with you, mine's kind of been like a teddy bear. It's even been out a few times, it walked around on me and it's been absolutely fine. I don't suggest handling any teas really, but sometimes during rehousing stuff, you've got no choice. So let's have a look at the Nandu Chromatus coming in at seven. All right, so this is your number seven. Nandochromatus again amazing looking tarantula this is also known as the Brazilian red and white tarantula or the Brazilian white striped bird eater um, I believe it grows to about six and a half inches along the lines of that this is only a juvenile at the moment it's probably still looking at a good three and a half inches I'm sorry about the camera work I'm trying to get warm for it as we speak um. Right guys, so welcome back. Let's keep going on this countdown and um, let's get straight into number six. The number six is my Gramostola Acteon or the Brazilian Red Rump is apparently one of the names it's got or the Woolly, I think Woolly Birdie or something. You'll see why it's called that in two, one, go. Right, guys, so here it is, number six. Gorilla still acting on. Let's try and change the light a bit. As you can see, again, a little bit like the um, Brachyoma Vagans or Vagans at number 10. This is again really, really dark. Um, legs, carapace, and stuff with the. Oh, try and get a bit, bit of light. The red hairs there. Like cherry red. Um, it's a stunning little tarantula if I can get enough light. You can see why it's called the woolly one. How fluffy his legs are. When it comes out of a new malt, they, these are unbelievably stunning. Dead. I think it's the fact that I prefer this over the vagans, vagans, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the fact that the size it puts on with each malt. And this is a juvenile, which is probably a good, I don't know, three and a half inches, and it's still got a fair bit of growing to do. Right, guys, so that was number six on our countdown. Now we're getting into the top five. Uh, I was going to say the top five spiders that I love in my collection, but I love every spider in my collection. Some a little bit more than others. The next one coming up, if you've seen my channel and you know me, was my first tea. Um... I absolutely love this spider. It's always been so relaxed, so calm. I mentioned before the fact that I like brachypalmas. I went through the um, vegans. So we kicked off the top 10 with a brachypalma. Let's kick off the top five with a brachypalma. This is my adult female brachypalma homori. Let's look at it. As you can see before I'm even above the enclosure, this is the reason why it's a perfect 
like the splay spider when a lot of people think of tarantulas they think of the Hamore or smithy um they're just they get to what five and a half inches as i said this is an adult female now um possibly looking for her to get a partner soon i wouldn't mind actually breeding these because i absolutely love them i have got somewhere up here a little bit shy at the moment but you might be able to see just to know another homori sling kind of hoping that's a male because let's face it females last a lot longer um bless her and all her glory all right guys welcome back we're inside the top five now um you may have noticed different shot on now um my camera died when i was filming the last one it was about 11 o'clock at night so i figured by the time it charges up enough for me to actually take decent videos and stuff it's going to be too late so we're going to continue the countdown at four something that i think everybody needs in their collection it's the spider that speaks for itself so i'm not going to say too much about it but this is the theraphosa blondie let's have a look Right guys, so as with the um, Grammastol or Poulter, I believe it was when I was filming before, um, this one, as I said, is a visual spider, but because of me taking the container down off the shelf, it's actually gone into behind here. So maybe we'll try and put in a little bit of food, see if we can get it out. So I said, this one's normally just out in this like webbed area here. We'll see if we can get a decent view of this one. There's only a, well, I would say sling. They're not really sure they're classed as slings when they're a goliath because of how quick they grow. Uh, let's see if we can just draw this one out. Oh. Unfortunately, that crawled in there, but I'll give you a we'll try and because that was only a little one. Let's see if we can get another one. Get a little bit further. And now it's gone past the camera, typical. This is, I literally bought this after its first molt. It's had two molts with me, and it's probably three and a half inches. But the reason I like these, oh, let's run away. And um, you can just see on the top of it from here the different colours on top of the carapace and stuff like that is an absolute stunning tarantula and as we all know when they grow to the full size they can grow to this has got to be in anyone's to be honest this would probably be my number one or two purely for the size it gets to and the fact that everyone is going to want to see it but at the moment it's a sling it's a very very big eater um I try not to feed up too much because I don't want it to grow and grow. And then if it's a male, it kind of shortens its lifespan. So I only feed mine twice a week. All right, guys. So the next one at three. Um, I think I might be lucky with this because someone literally posted on Facebook the other day about getting one of these. And a lot of people said it's not out as much as um, websites advertise it. However, mine is out all the time. Now, I can't remember for the life of me what it's called the scientific name so we'll put that on the screen now and number three is the brazilian blue beauty dwarf tarantula so let's have a quick look at that one before we get into our top two let's go you can see it's there it is out all the time I'm just wondering if one will take this off if it tries to run away it normally doesn't it's normally good there we are, see so if we can get a better look. A lot of people call this the mini GBB. You can see the colours there. Don't want to freak out too much. But it's absolutely stunning. You can see why this is in my top three. Amazing little tarantula. I know it's only a dwarf, but I figure everyone should have a dwarf tarantula. And most people that do, they end up in their like top favorite spiders. 
Right guys, so we're at number two, we've seen what people call the mini one. This is the chromatopan where cyan pubescent or the GBB as most people in the hobby know it. Mine is an adult female, I believe it's an adult. If not, it's one month off, but it's quite a size and looking at others it shows that we're advertised as an adult. I'm definitely thinking this one's an adult. So let's have a look at my GBB and this is at number two. So unfortunately, um, it's not feeding day for my GBB, so I won't be able to get it feeding, but just try and zoom in a bit so you can see. Absolutely stunning tarantula. If I pull it back a bit, you can see all the webbing. The webbing is amazing. These guys, in my opinion, are a must for any collector. This one's probably about, I'd say, five inches when it's spread out four and a half to five inches which looking at some out of show which would be in like so just mature males and stuff I went to this is a lot bigger than it um so it's a confirmed female as well which is always what people want so this is my number two you can see why you look at the blueness of the legs the green of the carapace the orange of the abdomen and it's just an absolutely stunning spider the temperament's really good on this one as well and I I do say regularly that if people were into the they don't want to get what they class as the boring looking tarantulas this is a go-to for me this is an absolutely stunning tarantula and they're quite laid back as well so should we go back and check out the number one guys Right guys, so it's time for that number one slot. Um, before we do, there's a couple of other teas that I would like to mention and the reasons behind why they're not in my collection. Um, the first one is the Gramostola Poker piece or the Chaco Golden New. Um, again, stunning tarantula when it starts to get its colours. I've got two at the moment and they're both slings. So... That's the reason they didn't quite make it onto the list. And I've got the H. Polkrapies, the Golden Blue Leg Baboon. Again, you can just start to see the colours on that one. I'll put pictures of them if I can. Or maybe like a little tiny video playing of them and show the reasons why. Um, I've got my Formictropis Actromatus, which is the Red Island Barita. Again, nice spider. But it's just, at the moment, it's, to be honest, it's not doing the best. I came in the other day and it was in the death car. I've managed to get it over its water dish. It seems right. It's taken food since, so fingers crossed that one's going to be on the mend. And there was another one I was going to mention, but I can't think of it. Oh, my Piamina, which is up here, which you might be able to see. She is always out, she doesn't really hide in the bit which she's made her hide. She is always out and she is a stunning spider. However, for the fact that there is the odd occasion that she hides, then this is the reason why I've not put that one in there. But so that is the shout outs to the one sap for very close to making it but didn't quite make it. It's another reason that most people are here. The number one in my collection at the moment, purely because of size, the setup I've got it in, the striking colours between the hairs and the actual spider. I've done a rehouse quite recently on this one, which I will link up above. And as I said before this video, um, people may say about the Tarantula Collector video that they did again, top 10 visual. If you go back and look through the comments on that video, you'll see we had a conversation. He actually suggested that I should do this because he was interested in what I would think is my top 10 in my collection. So that's the main reason we've done it. But let's get into number one. Number one is my LP, my Lacedoria Paravana, uh, Salmon Pink Bird Eater. And you'll see the reasons why right now. What about? Um, there's the LP, you can just see this here. 
is a spam web so I'm not sure this is one of the favorite teas in my collection so I don't really want to get rid of it I kind of don't want to get any eaten either but I also know that it kind of has a purpose to do and the fact that it's making spam webs says to me he wants to make so this is the enclosure bioactive setup live plants stuck on like vine going through and um, I miss this probably four times a week because obviously in the Amazon it is a bit um a bit damp it's got high humidity um it's got quite a big water dish in there as well to help keep with that got a layer under here for water to seep through mesh on top and then obviously that but let's see if we can open this up a bit so you can get a better picture I don't want to flick in the ass because those do itch. So there she is. You can see the little hair going around as it is. But this is a fully grown male. It's about eight and a half inches. And the bold spot on the back, unfortunately, this beast. And as you can imagine with the visual setup, quite often it Larks on the back wall or on top of the crocodile skull I've got. Really enough, I've put a hide in that I've not seen it use yet. It seems to really like being out on the plants. So, guys, that's my number one. Hit me up in the comments below to let me know what your number one would be in your collection. And give me a top ten if you want. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Remember, if you enjoyed the videos, please hit that subscribe button. And um, smash that like button. And as always, you can share the content. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on Twitter as well. Not as active on Twitter as the other two. But for more updates than you see on my channel, Instagram is probably the best place. So for me, DLP, and all the other animals in my collection, hope you enjoyed this and see you on the next video. Bye for now.